Hey, welcome to the shop. So today we're having fun with fuel injectors. You can see I've got the fuel rail out and uh, one of the injectors and a connector tube off this 5.9 Cummins. Uh, there's a lot of videos out there that will show you how to get to the point of removing the injectors and installing them, so I'm not going to repeat all of that. And I won't show you the disassembly of every injector in the, um, in the truck or the installation of all the injectors, but I will walk through some ideas for how to uninstall an injector correctly and then more importantly the considerations when installing the injectors. Uh, I've got the Dodge service manual with all the correct uh, specs, uh, torque, not only the torque values but also the sequence of installing the injector and the connector and the torque values that go along with that. I've reviewed a ton of videos and there's a lot of misinformation about that out there. I've found over the years that you can, you can do really well reassembling things if you understand how and why each component that you're taking apart functions. What its purpose is, why it's clocked the way it is, why it's installed the way it is. We're going to do that here with these injectors and I hope you find it beneficial so that you can be uh, efficient in your injector installation and more importantly that it'll be done right. So the first thing I want to kind of go over is the uh, injector rail assembly itself and what's happening in your injection system. So when from your pump, your high pressure pump, uh, you have a fitting that goes in here and the fuel comes into this fuel rail at about 23 or 26,000 psi, just tremendous pressure. And the fuel rail, all, all along the fuel rail has the same uh, pressure of the fuel. Each of these lines is a fuel line that goes to a separate cylinder. We got six cylinders, we've got six lines. This is cylinder number one up front, closest to the radiator. And this is cylinder, cylinder number six, clear at the back of the block. On each of these tubes, there's a connector nut, and it attaches, uh, it's our way of getting the fuel from, from, the, from this assembly into each individual injector. And so let's see how they go together and how they work. So this is a connector tube, and the connector tube is, and I'm going to show you on the block, actually on the motor, it's installed into the side of the head and the connector tube is held in place with this retaining nut and I'll show you, it might take a second for that to focus on there so it's held in place with this retaining nut the retaining nut goes over the top it has a beveled surface in here in that surface it contacts this surface right here and it's held in, uh, it's torqued into place and once it's its job is to hold this connector tube against the fuel injector and so I'm gonna I'm gonna kinda put this assembly together you have the nut on there and then we have uh, we're gonna use the number two injector line here where here's the retaining nut well that's the retaining nut on the on the uh, connector tube and then this is the fuel line nut that screws into and holds on to the connector tube itself. You'll see that this guy's loose because it's purpose right now. It's got nothing to screw into, but it's normally screwed right into the head tight, holding this in tight. And then what happens is, as it's inside the head, here's our fuel injector. And the fuel injector has got this little hole right there where my second to the smallest finger is. Maybe it's had time to focus on it. The injector sits upright in the top of the cylinder, in this case cylinder number two. And the injector, this connector tube is in that is in that little hole of the injector. And so this 23,000 or 26,000 PSI is constantly pushing against this injector. There's constant pressure uh, of that amount inside the injector. On top of this injector are two, you can see the two electric, um, electric connections. And there's two electric nuts that are screwed onto that, the wire harness. 
And when it's time for the injector to fire to squirt fuel into the cylinder, then it, it fires here against these electronic connectors and, and uh, the fuel squirts out of the bottom of the injector into the cylinder. And what's really interesting is on a Dodge Cummins, it fires like three times during the, during the um, compression stroke and into the power stroke uh, at different parts of the stroke. So that's why it's got to be such incredible pressure, plus it atomizes the fuel. Uh, into a very fine vapor that, that burns better. So this connector tube is torqued very tightly against the injector itself and the injector is torqued into the head and so you've got to be sure that you get the sequence right with installing the injector and then the tube. And so we'll walk through the sequence later but for right now I want you to be clear and kind of get a visual on how everything fits together and what its function is. Okay, so we're going to run over to the engine and we're going to and we're going to show you how the injector and the connector tube actually mount in the head. Um, before we do, I want to mention to you about this fuel that comes at, while you're disassembling. Um, how important it is to keep this very clean. Your fuel that comes from your high pressure pump has already gone through your fuel filter. And the fuel filter uh, is like a 5 micron, that's a really tiny hole, 5 micron size fuel filter. And your injectors, uh, contaminants that are any bigger than that, can plug your injector. And what that means is, when the injector opens to squirt fuel into the cylinder, and if there's a little piece of crud that's bigger than 5 microns, then it may prevent the injector from closing at the end of the cycle, which means fuel continues to run at 23,000 PSI into your cylinder. That's the way that you, get, uh, that you burn a hole in a piston. And so it's critical that your fuel is clean. So a, a lot of us have put aftermarket fuel filters that are even better than the stock one. Um, Fast makes a good one. I've installed an air dog on mine, so it's down to two microns, uh, the fuel filter, so that we're sure that this fuel is clean. Now, why is that important to know? Because when you go to disassemble this, you want to be darn sure that every time, like this is the pressure line that came from the pump, as soon as you pull that off, this is a little finger that I cut off of, uh, cut off of uh, you know, a shop glove, uh, just a latex glove, Put that on there, throw a rubber band around it. Because by the time the fuel has arrived here, it's already been cleaned. So if you contaminate this while this is out of the vehicle and you put it back together, guess what you're going to have the first time you start your truck? The potential for jamming an injector with crud. So it's super critical to really be clean as you, as you remove this. And so each of these, what will happen when you're removing these is, is if you remove them like I did, um, one way is to remove every line. Another way is to do it like I did and you remove each of the nuts and back them off. And you unscrew the bolts and the hold downs for these clamps. And then you pull this all off as an assembly. Well, as soon as you back this nut off, the tip of this guy is still going to be pressed up against the connector tube. And so it's fine. But once you've got them all loosened up and the first time that you're able to move this rail some distance from the head, you need to immediately stop and cover each of these little lines with a finger from a glove or however you want to do it to prevent contamination from getting in there. Because you'll rustle it around in the engine compartment, you know, moving things around and you get a speck of grease or dirt or something like that and you could ruin your brand new injectors that you're putting in. So it's really critical and I don't see many videos talk about talk about that at all. Okay, let's take a let's head over to the truck and we'll and we'll talk about how these fit. Okay, so here we are. Here's um, I replaced the uh, head bolts with head studs the other day. There's another video out there on that. And so the rocker box is off in addition to of course all the rocker arms. But I didn't want to put any of that back on until I got the fuel injectors in. So you don't have to have it disassembled this far in order to do the, just the fuel injectors. You would need to have all the exhaust rockers off and uh, perhaps some intakes as you, as you work through it if there's any that are in the way. So 
as we look here I want to show you a couple of things so here is so here is the uh, that's the number two hole the number two cylinder uh, the hole for the injector itself you look down in that hole you can see uh, where the fuel injector sits in there that hole in the bottom is open and it goes right to the to the top of the piston so you want to be really careful that you don't drop anything in there or you'll be pulling a head off if it can fit through that hole so to the side of that hole down in there is a port that goes off on a diagonal and this diagonal is right here and that is where the injector or the connector tube is inserted so let's let's look at that so there you go that's where the connector tube uh, is installed and you can see it's threaded for the connector nut that we looked at that torques the connector tube in there so it goes in here and you see those two little the two little uh, ball bearings at the top they're a guide uh, and they hold the connector tube vertical while you're torquing on it but you put them facing upward you won't be able to get it in very far if you have them at the wrong there that's the wrong clocking can't get it any farther than that turn it and it slides in now it's to the point where the rubber o-ring needs to be pressed in so here we go so now if we look down the down the tube or down our injector port then you'll see that tube that connector tube is sticking out um, into the injector uh, hole and that's where it would be engaging with the injector so it gives you an idea of the structure at the time you go to disassemble this you can't pull the injector out first obviously because you've got that connector tube installed so I wanted you to see how that part went together okay so the goal here is I want to show you how to uninstall uh, an injector and connector tube and so I've kind of put it back on this one cylinder how things roughly were when I came to disassemble so here's our fuel rail and this nut was on this here's our you know we just put our tube in our connector tube the retaining nut is on there that torques it in our fuel injector is installed and so this nut here here's another for cylinder one but the cylinder two nut just like this one was screwed on to the connector tube and boy did I have a hard time getting that little monster off what I used and I would recommend this this is a this is a um, crow's foot uh, socket it's just on an extension right and it's can swivel and that's how you can get an accurate torque value when you go to torque this nut now since there's a line here then you can't get a, a regular closed end wrench around it right you can get an open end wrench but then you're just pulling on two things and these are typically a delicate assembly but they're a little beefier on this one so you're probably fine with a regular wrench and everybody I see does just fine with a regular wrench but me being a knucklehead and detailed this is how I was how I loosened these nuts they were really tight and so I ended up having to put I put some um, oh what do you call it you know penetrating oil I use a sea foam type and it helped and I was able to but it wanted to twist this wire or this tube at the same time and so I had to hold the tube as I pulled on this on this nut and it finally broke free so hopefully yours will go easier others I see on videos uh, were not that big a hassle so I'll pause it for a minute I'll get this out of the way uh, but I wanted you to see that so the fuel rail's gone and 
as I had removed the fuel rail, remember I pulled it away and covered the openings? Right down here, you can't see it past my finger, is the top of the fuel line that comes from the high pressure pump into the bottom of the fuel rail. What I forgot to tell you was be sure to cap that off with a finger from a glove as well so that crap doesn't go straight down into that. Okay, so here we are. And you saw the configuration. We're not going to pull this first because we've got a connector tube that's in there. So this is a 22 millimeter socket. Mine came out super easy to remove this retaining nut. <clears throat> but my connector tubes were a different story. Holy smoke. Um, this one on number one, I could not get it out. And that was even using, this is a tool that they make to help you remove your connector tubes. It's got a knurled thing and it threads onto the threads of the connector tube itself. And the idea is, a lot of people I see on videos, they'll say, yeah, you put this on and those knurls are there so you got something to grip and pull it out. That's not why they're there. So the reason it's there is that this screws clear in until it contacts the face of the side of the head here. And then as you screw it in farther, it gradually and evenly on both sides pulls the connector tube out. That's how it's supposed to be used. So I ended up putting um, a monkey wrench on it and it was really hard to turn on the number one cylinder and it finally popped out. And what I saw was uh, I pulled it out and it all looked fine, it was clean and I lubed up the o-ring and then with one finger I was able to pop it back in and I was able to pull it back out just with my fingers. So it was just because that o-ring had dried out that it was super hard to get it out. Anyway, there's some info for you. So with this you can pull out your whole um, connector tube. Uh, there's the information, this is the one I bought. The dealer sells one that has a groove around it and they say you can pry, that's what the service manual actually says. I don't like that because you end up prying sideways instead of using the base of this to give a consistent pull. So there you go on that. Then once that's out, we're really careful not to get crap in that hole, right? Just for all the reasons we talked about. Um, and so now we're gonna pull the injector and what I used was this little crow's foot. And I'd see that in some videos and this is already loose. See in our injector, it's, there's a washer kind of thing here that's always there. It's captive. And then there's the top. And the crow's foot's gonna go under, under that washer. And right between these two, uh, there's an exhaust valve and an intake valve. Or the other way around, I can't remember. And you put it in and you just pop the crow's foot Boom, and it pops right up. And those came out really, really easy. And so there you go. You've got your injectors uh, removed. Then I went to clean the holes, and I want to talk to you about that. So you want to blow it out? Yeah, I got a, um, I just took a regular air chuck and put this little adapter on it. This is a 3 16 fuel line and it's really awesome. So I put that down in the hole and get a rag over the top to catch whatever blows out and blow it out. And then what I did, I haven't seen anybody do this, but I wanted to clean this connector tube channel. Well, you don't want to blow anything that way. And so what you do is you take this tube and you bend it like that, right? And then you put it down in the hole and I've clocked it so that the end of the tube is toward that port. And now, there it is. It's popped into that hole. And now when I do the, maybe you can see this rag move and it really blows out that connector tube hole and you can get it good and clean. And then I cover everything with this plastic and uh, you're good to go until you're ready for install. So there you go on the removal and uh, our install will come up here tomorrow when my injectors come in. Hey, so uh, the injectors came in. Uh, I've already installed five of them. I wanted to get a technique down before I um, showed, showed it to you on film. Try and be as efficient for you guys as we can. 
Uh, I bought these injectors from uh, Dynamite Diesel. These ones happen to be, uh, they call them 15% over. They're brand new Bosch injectors. Uh, polished orifices and, and a balance set. It's supposed to give us about 50 horsepower and they say one to two miles per gallon. So we'll see. So, and you know, you guys are spending a lot of money on injectors. You'll spend anywhere from two to four thousand dollars on injectors. So we want to be sure that we do it right. Remember our DIR thing. So here's how they come from dynamite. Uh, there's a cap that's protecting the injector tip. There's another cap that is um, protecting the orifice for the, uh, for the connector tube. And it's all lubed already. I won't even have to put any grease on this seal. It'll go right in. It's already got the, the copper washer in place and it's hard to turn. So they've got it greased on there and I'm confident that it won't drop down into the bore when we turn it vertical. So it'll be fine there. And then they have this cap on the top to protect, to protect the uh, electrical contacts. Now what you can do, and I did it on the first one, you leave the cap on and that's what you use to push the injector in. We're going to go over to the motor and we're going to do the whole thing here in a minute. Um, after a while what I liked better than doing that was putting both hands, both fingers on the sides of this. And I kind of want to talk to you about that. So you notice we got this, uh, this uh, permanently retained washer here that's of course flat but this guy which is what the bolts go through he's on a he's on a pivot and there's a reason for that and so the reason is they want this inject the the bolts themselves will center the injector over the hole right those bolts are going to center the injector over the hole and so what this rocker allows you to do is as you tighten down the bolts, they want you to alternately tighten one side or another, but if you're not perfect and you end up with this one being a little tighter than the other, then what is pushing on the washer is just this point and the same point on the other side. And so the force of the bolts is being centered, centered over this washer. So we're centered by the bolts this way and we're centered over, over the hole this way by virtue of the washer. So that's important to know because you don't got to freak out too much when you're alternately tightening them down. You want to stay within some reasonable tolerance, but uh, it's not like super, super critical because they got the wobble there. So, uh, so that's the injector. Now there's a couple of prep things that I've done on each of the, each of the cylinders. Uh, one is here's the retaining nut for the connector tube. And what I do with this retaining nut is I put a little bit of uh, anti-seize on the threads on the outside. Just just something there so it doesn't uh, gum it up. I'll put it on and then I'll wipe it off, really. So I've just got a thin layer of anti-seize. And then the other thing that I'll do is remember how these go together and there's a mating surface right here with the machine surface inside that nut. And so I'll put a little anti-seize on this surface, or oil would be fine, or a little, little bit of grease. But we'll put um, a little bit of anti-seize on there just so that when we're torquing, it's actually sliding on that surface instead of trying to gall up uh, between the two metal surfaces. And actually I've got enough on, the, on this guy to just smear just a little bit on there, and that's really, I think, all that you would need. And then what I do is I also take the connector tube itself, and I put some anti-seize on these threads. You want to be really careful that you don't get anything inside there. Remember I talk about crud. So we don't want anything inside that hole, but I'll put the anti-seize on the outside. I kind of keep it well below the top of the threads. And then I take my rag. I like the side of the rag that is not as fluffy, if you will. And then I, I wipe it and I try to make sure that I don't get up above that top thread line. Just so you got a light coating in there, that'll help out. Won't hurt a thing and it will and it will help you. So we do that. Now, what I also need to show you is that I replaced these are my old uh, connector tubes. As I talked to the guys at Dynamite, they said you don't need to replace the connector tubes unless when you inspect them, you find that there's uh, look for a a vertical um, line or mark or uh, wear pattern uh, through the tip right here. 
if you find that, that's a high pressure fuel leak. And in that case, you'll, you need to replace this for sure. But they said unless you've been three or four times changing injectors, that you really don't need to replace these tubes as long as the tips aren't rusted, rusted or corroded, and as long as you don't have those wear lines that I talked about. So you can save a little money there. Uh, so, but I'm going to replace the O-ring uh, that's on this injector, on this connector tube. So how I'll do this is I'll take a, I'll take a little hook and I'm going to put it under that O-ring. And it's kind of tough because these O-rings are, they're pretty strong. And uh, I try to get him under there. See that? And I'm trying not to damage anything while I do it. I don't want to scratch these surfaces. Once I've got it pulled over, I can use my thumb. And I just pull it down around, all the way around. And I've got an O-ring off. We'll take this new O-ring. And I'm done with that tool. And I have this. I love this stuff. This is 3M silicone uh, lubricant paste. It's high temp. Uh, it never goes away, uh, and it's safe for all rubber washers. So it's really awesome stuff. So I take some of that, and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm actually going to clean that slot that we pulled that O-ring out of. So I'm sure I got everything out of there. And then I'm going to put some of this in there. Because I want to coat the what the o-ring is going to be sitting against inside that groove and then I'm not going to lube the o-ring because he can be tough to get over the deal but I'm going to I'm going to hold on to this guy I'm going to slide the o-ring up and since I haven't lubed it I should be able to push it on over and roll it I should be able to push it on over and roll it right over right over that guy so we'll see how I do so it's rolled over and it's popped in we're in good shape there. I don't like using tools then because I don't want to mar that o-ring or harm it. And so then I'll put some more of this 3M on the outside. You can't really put too much. And now we're lubed up. So we're prepped and ready to go. I also have, so that old o-ring's gone. These are the hold down bolts for the uh, fuel injector. And we got a really specific sequence that the, that the service manual calls out for. And I have only seen one video that's done it right in the many that I've reviewed. So this is really a critical part of the install. Okay, so let's head over to the motor. Okay, here we go. Well, first I'll tell you, I've got all of this documented, and I'm happy to send it to anybody that emails me. My email address will be at the end of the video. But all of the teardown for fuel injectors, all the buildup, everything, all the stuff, you know, everything. <clears throat> More than I'm covering in the video. Okay, so we got this really specific sequence that I mentioned. First is that we're going to install a fuel injector. And remember about our, about our connector tube is going to go in here and it needs to connect with that port on the side of the injector. So we have that port facing that direction. Put him in. Slide him in there, and then like I say, there's our rocking thing, right? I like to just get it centered, and there you go. I'm not pushing down on the top. I just like that better. <clears throat> so now we're ready to put the bolts in. You just want to tighten the bolts down finger, finger tight. Now remember this thing rocks, right? Try to get it as level as you can. All the heights of your valve springs are the same, so they're a good reference point to see if you're if you're level. Get the bolts snug down. <coughs> Sorry about the sniffling. So I'm a little high on that side. Loosen up this side and tighten that one. There I'm feeling pretty even. Now our first torque is going to be to 44 inch pounds and I'm going to put this up on the screen for you. So you're going to want to tighten each side. I go about a quarter turn per side to try and tighten them down at the same, uh, you know, same amount. We're trying to keep that wobble thing 
there's a there's a break a click and there we go okay so we we've torqued this to 44 inch pounds but the instructions now are that we back we completely loosen it up because what we've done is we've ensured that the that the injector is seated properly and so it says to loosen it until the bolts are loose but you leave the bolts in place now we're ready to do our connector tube so we bring our connector tube in we make sure that we're do a last check on the tip make sure it's good and clean when we go to put it in you got the hole we're going to put it in but there's crud all around that hole so you don't want to bang it around trying to find the hole get to where you can see it or feel it for the one on the back you know get it started remember the clocking for our two uh, ball bearings they need to be up I'll turn them sideways and you'll see that it won't go in all the way then as I twist it they drop on in to where they should be and then a light pressure and there we go we've got our connector tube seated into the orifice in the fuel injector so now we're going to install the retaining nut remember we've put some anti-seize on this so we want to keep that surface away from the front of this because we don't want any crap to get into the orifices of our connector tube so we slide that on there okay we put them in finger tight now we're ready to torque this retaining nut on the connector tube I want to talk a little bit about torquing. So I've got a quarter inch drive, which is the really the right drive for this. We're only torquing to uh, 15 newton meters or 11 foot pounds. And so that's right at the bottom of the scale for my 3 8 torque wrench, but it's right in the middle of the scale for this quarter inch. But we're torquing a 24 millimeter nut, so you won't find any 24 millimeter sockets with a quarter inch drive. So we go to a 3 8 adapter and then down to a quarter inch adapter. Don't worry about how many adapters there are or when you're torquing how long an extension is that comes straight off at a 90 degree angle. It can be four feet long and you'll still get the same torque. Your torque changes if you have the kind of an extension that comes off the side or the length changes and then you need to do some calculations. So we're torquing an initial torque on this to 15 newton meters. There it is, 15 newton meters. Okay, now we're ready to come back to our injectors and we snug those nuts up by hand again, make sure that they're level. And we're gonna do a final torque now of 89 inch pounds. And so we do the same thing where we, where we do a uh, partial on each side. Uh, you know, we're alternately going back and forth. So what I like to do is, if you're gonna do an eighth of a turn, do an eighth of a turn on each side. Eighth of a turn. And that way you can be consistent. Wherever you start from, you just go an eighth of a turn. A fourth of a turn is quite a bit. An eighth of a turn I think is a good one. There's one. And there we are. I always jump back a couple times. Make sure that we're... There we go. So that's our final torque on the injector. Now we're going to do a final torque on this retaining nut and it is 37 foot-pounds. And the other thing I'll tell you about torque wrenches is when you go to torque, you want to, all the torque is calculated based on assuming that your hand is going to be centered in the center of the grip. Uh, so the torque will change if you grab it at a different place on the bar. So try to stay at the center of the handle when you do your torques. 37 foot-pounds. And there we go. So we now have installed our fuel injector and our torque tube, or our connector tube, and we've done it in the correct sequence so that that mating between the connector tube and the injector uh, happens correctly and we've got a good seal there. So that's all per the Dodge service manual. From here, I'm going to go ahead and, and install the rest of everything. I'm not going to drag you through that. You can see that in a lot of different places. Hey, 
So there you have uh, an injector removal and an injector install and all the little gory details uh, in between that I hope you find to be helpful so that you've got a successful installation. You're spending a lot of money on these injectors. You, you really want to be sure that it's done right, doing it right, like in the scuba world, so that, uh, so that you can uh, depend on these injectors and they'll serve you for a long time. I love doing my own work because I know how it's done and I learn a lot in the process and you must be that way too and that's, that's why you're here. So I hope you found it to be helpful. Um, all of, I've got instructions that are really detailed that I've done for the injector removal as I mentioned and also for the head stud uh, replacement and you're welcome to them. Just send me an email. I have my address at the end of the video. I hey, hope you have a great day and see you next time. See ya.